I had several favorite teachers, but the top of the list would be Ida Crum, C-R-U-M. Uh, she taught Spanish at Hollenbeck Junior High, and I had her when I was in high school. And I got an A both semesters in the ninth grade for Spanish one and Spanish two. This was uh, a marvelous teacher. Uh, and when I came back to teaching in 1962, having finished college, she was still teaching there. So she went from teacher to colleague, and that was really nice. And when she retired in 1966, we gave her a really wild celebration. We, I was on the committee. And at that particular time, I decided I, I would create a profile of her career at Hollenbeck. Now, one of the uh, less known but very valuable resources for anybody who's interested in education or, or school history are files of the school newspapers. And this is really underappreciated because uh, in many cases these are reporting on news of the community, not just the set. Well, Hollenbeck's file went back to about 1917, a really, really long run. So I was able to track her career by just going through all the newspapers from 1925 all the way down to 1966. They had a good run there. And so every now and then there's an article about Miss Crum in the newspaper, and I was able to reconstruct much of her uh, school career that way. And we printed this up and we gave it a huge uh, retirement celebration, so this was part of it. And that's 1966, 40 years ago. Well, I uh, was going through some papers looking for one thing, and I have a theory that you always find what you're not looking for. So I didn't find what I was looking for, but I ran across the profile I had done on her back then. I said, you know, this is, this is interesting now because uh, she had such a long career in one school and, and was able to influence so many lives. So I'm working on... Uh, trying to do something with her career. Uh, now we may have gotten in touch with uh, Whittier College. Then I find out that she was the founder of, uh, of a society there that's still very much around. And they're interested in her because she's a founder and they didn't know anything about her subsequent career. So it's been an interesting chase and I'm still working on that. Uh, but she was head and shoulders, a, a very marvelous, uh, inspirational teacher with a great sense of humor. I think that sense of humor should be part of the job application for anybody going into teaching these days. That and uh, a little bit of certified insanity. It's necessary if you're going to survive in the schools. So she was very close, pretty much the top of the list. How many years of education have you completed? I got my PhD and I'm still learning. I got my PhD in UCLA 1970, but I am still learning. I st I, 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 have a, I may learn a little bit differently from students today, but I'm still in a learning process. So the way I do it is I do a lot of book reviewing. And so I'm obligated to read the book as well as to think about it and then write a review on it. And uh, I encourage my students to do the same kind of thing because reading is, seems to become in, rather in danger these days. But there is a reading audience out there and although I focus largely on history and the history that I do a lot of research and writing in, I'm pretty much interested in most aspects of history, most periods. And so that's how I'm still learning. And I look back on when I got my BA and I realized how little I knew and it got a little bit better when I got the MA I still was dissatisfied. That's what put me into going to UCLA, trying to get the PhD. And now looking back on that, I'm saying, oh, God, I didn't know anything when I got that PhD. <laughs> so uh, I'm still learning. What were your fields in for your PhD? Uh, let's see, UCLA. Okay. Uh, uh, the West was one field, uh, United States history. Latin American history, and then the oddball one was Tudor Stewart, England, which was, it still is a rather fascinating uh, area for me to look at. Um, I, as you mentioned before this, the interview, uh, the Huntington Library has got these different groups meeting. They also publish the Huntington Library Quarterly, 
I think the library is a strange library in some ways because it, it reflects it reflects to this day the interests of Henry Huntington who started it and he was interested in gathering material of a regional nature so it has an extraordinarily rich collection of Southern California history but he's also interested in um, 17th century British literature and history, so there's enormous amounts of stuff there. Well, the Huntington Library Quarterly doesn't say anything about regional history and hasn't done so in decades, but they, they're kind of snobbish, I guess, because they're always doing these articles on uh, uh, British history and, and things about Dryden and... And uh, colonial history. Very seldom. Very well, they have, seldom. They have a, a big collection of but stuff it, there. Yeah, but they're not publishing on it. Oh, really? No, oh. It's, it's almost entirely... Uh, British. Uh, of Stuart, Stuart and... Oh, I guess all, I, well, the Stuart rule of monarchs all the way through the 17th century. A little bit of the 18th. Sometimes they'll get into that. Sometimes they'll back it up to the Tudors with Elizabeth and uh, England. And uh, a lot doing with uh, the playwrights and they'll get some Shakespeare going and uh, poets I never heard of. And then the most minuscule kinds of articles imaginable. I cracked up one time. I, th I don't think there's five people on the planet who understand this article and I'm not one of them. <laughs> and then every once in a while, because they do that, they'll throw something in that just makes up for it all. You know, this one guy did an extraordinarily scholarly article on someone who passed gas in Parliament in 1607, I think it was. And whereupon everyone in Parliament got up and tried to outwit the next person by making jokes about it. And it was all written down, and then people started writing down all these two-line you know, couplets about passing gas in Parliament. And this is, you know, this is Parliament, it's supposed to be a very serious kind of thing and all that. But this was the stuff that, well, like, like you get on the internet. Hey, here's the joke I've gotten, and you send it to 20 of your friends. It just went around like wildfire. So, uh, you know, every once in a while they'll put an article like that in and say, all right, I'll keep reading it.